Hey everyone, it's Phil Wade with Dalton Wade Real Estate Group and we are doing some uh, new agent training here and uh, we've just completed uh, talking about working with a buyer and now we're moving on to working with a seller. So uh, when you work with a seller, uh, one thing you're going to do is uh, have them complete or you're going to complete and have them sign a listing agreement. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about the listing agreement in this video and then the next, next video we're going to talk a little bit about um, the listing presentation. So this video should be uh, looked at in conjunction with the exclusive right of sale listing agreement. So if we're just going to kind of quickly spin through that, uh, you should have a completed one so you can actually see how everything is filled out, but we're going to kind of touch upon uh, what you need to actually fill out. So the first thing is, um, you know, the seller's name. If there's more than one seller, then both names. Uh, the next is the brokerage name, Dalton Wade, Inc. Uh, how long the listing agreement is for. It has a start date and then an end date. Before I forget, in addition to um, the listing agreement, you're also going to have to complete um, an MLS input form um, that has all the particulars about the property and then you're going to have your seller sign that as well. Um, and then once the listing agreement is signed, you have two days to get the listing into the MLS unless you get a waiver from the seller um, um, for it to be out at, at some later date. Um, so that's, that's line, you know, um, so the, when it begins and when it ends, uh, now we're moving on to line 13, which is the street address, the legal description, you can get that off of the MLS. Um, you're going to ask your client, for instance, um, they may have a washer dryer, is that something they're planning to take with them, or if they're going to leave it, then that would be, you know, put in the listing agreement as something that's going to remain behind what the listing price is, um, what type of financing are they willing to accept. Obviously cash is always, um, is always good and usually conventional, but then depending on uh, the, the home and its condition, it may be subject, it may uh, be okay for VA and FHA financing. We talked a little bit about that uh, in a previous, um, in a previous uh, video. Um, the next is um, number line 51 which talks about displaying the property on the interest, on the, excuse me, on the internet, there's a box to check there, so you're, you're gonna, uh, the check box is display the property on the internet except the street address, so you're not gonna check that unless specifically the client asks you, because again, um, you know, they're not doing themselves a favor by not having the street address there. Um, and then there's another box that the seller doesn't allow uh, the property to be on the internet. Um, and then they have to initial that. Um, you know, can you use a lockbox system? Typically, you're going to have a lockbox that's going to allow the buyer's agents uh, into the property. Um, then we're going to move on to line eight, which is um, the compensation. So this is a little bit confusing, but the compensation is the total amount that they're going to pay. So if, if it's 6%, 3% for Dalton Wade and 3% for the buyer's agent, uh, line 99 is going to be 6%. Now you may put in the additional because there's another line which is cooperation uh, with um, with other brokers, um, and again if you're splitting that it's going to be three percent. Somehow sometimes the buyer might be confused and think they're actually paying nine percent, uh, but you could put in the additional terms that the most the buyer excuse me the most the seller will pay um, is is six percent. So that way it kind of just clarifies that. Um, if you're typically, and we mentioned uh, when we talked about the office policies and procedures, um, we're going to be a transaction broker, so you want to make sure the form you use is the one exclusive right of sale transaction broker. That's line 10. Um, number 11, um, sometimes if uh, the seller wants to terminate the contract early, there may be a fee due. Um, personally, I never charge a fee. If they want out, then I just let them out but you may feel differently and it's up to you as the agent. Uh, we really don't have a firm policy regarding that. Um, and you could put some type of, you know, fee that may, maybe covers, you know, your photos, any out-of-pocket expenses you have. Um, the next one is dispute resolution. Uh, we always want um, uh, the, it to go to arbitration. Um, if there is a dispute, we've never had a dispute, but there's always a first time. So me as broker has to sign that, uh, your client signs it, and then you sign it as the sales associate. Um, and then number 14 is the additional terms. Um, 
something, you know, uh, maybe there's somebody they want to exclude, or maybe they've shown the property to somebody and, and um, you might do something well if that person does buy it, you know, instead of it being 6%, uh, the fee is 2%. Um, or, you know, maybe if you find the buyer directly, um, you may want to give them, you know, some type of discount so that, you know, it's a little bit less work, you know, for you. Uh, you're making more, um, but you're not charging them the full 6%. So you might put something, you know, seller to pay 4.5% if, you know, XYZ agent uh, procures the buyer directly. Um, so, you know, with, as I mentioned, with this video, um, you know, go through the sample uh, listing agreement and you'll see how that was completed. Um, and then just kind of take it from there. So now um, we're going to move on to um, to the listing presentation and then some of the other documents beyond the listing agreement that you'll want to have with you uh, when you do your listing presentation. Thank you.